There are very few universal truths in game dev. Most of the time, the best way to do something in a game is dependent on a bunch of other factors, and what might be the best way for you to do something may not necessarily be the best way for me to do something. However, one of those universal truths in game dev is that if your game is experiencing performance issues, the first thing that you should do in pretty much every case is to run your game in the debugger and look at the profiler and see if that reveals anything about where the performance issues lie. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about the debugger. So to run your game in the debugger in Game Maker, uh, you can get there a few ways. You can hit the F6 key, you can click on this little icon in the toolbar up at the top over here that says debug. It has an icon of a bug on it, very on the nose. So if we run the game in the debugger, uh, the game will run as usual, but it will do some additional things in the background. It will open up a, uh, a whole new window. And um, it'll also, if you've never done this before, it will ask you for permission to make an exception in the Windows firewall, because basically the way that Game Maker's debugger works and the way that it talks to your game is it basically creates a uh, local server and it talks to your game over that. And uh, by the way, this show debug overlay um, feature, this is not the debugger with the capital D. The information that you can get from that debug overlay is nice to have, and it can certainly be useful, but it's not what we're looking at today. So let me, uh, let me move that out of the way a little bit. So this game here, uh, this is my base, base project that I use for a lot of examples in these Game Maker videos. This is not a game which is experiencing performance issues, but I do want to start with something simple before I move on to show a, uh, a larger game with more happening in it. So, uh, by default, when you, uh, when you open the debugger, you can find the profiler in the Others tab over here. Uh, if you have closed this for whatever reason, you can get it back by clicking on the debugger going up here, Windows, and then the uh, Profile option at the bottom of that list of windows. And uh, as, as with many things in the Game Maker IDE, you can dock it to a different part of the window, you can drag it out, you can have it floating around like this. Um, to start profiling, you can click the Start Profiling button and that will start creating a record of all of the things that are happening in your game and how long they take. I'm going to let that run for a few seconds. You can run around in the game world a little bit if you wish to um, maybe get a, a good average picture of what might be happening in your game. When you're finished, click Stop. Um, the average values tick box over here, I don't know if this is checked by default. I would recommend checking that by default because most of the time uh, you're going to want the, uh, the timings averaged out over however many frames you captured. Sometimes there might be a reason for you not to do that, such as if you want to measure um, like the game, like loading another room or something like that, but for the most part, uh, you will want that checked. Over here, you can select top down or bottom up. Top down is the default view. That will create a tree structure in which you can look at um, all of the, basically the game maker object events first and foremost, and then you can expand those um, as you see fit to see uh, the function calls and whatever code is happening within. Uh, over here, we have my code versus engine code, which is all the stuff that Game Maker does in the background, and combined, which is all the stuff that Game Maker does in the background plus your code. Um, most of the time, the part that you care about is going to be falling under my code. And then we have uh, each of these each of these records. So you can click on the headings to sort them. You can sort them alphabetically, sort them by the number of times each of these things is called per frame on average, sort by the amount of milliseconds that it takes each of these things to do. Uh, per frame on average. As you can see, uh, there's nothing really complicated happening here. We have eight microseconds, eight microseconds, five microseconds. Um, in a larger game, obviously, you're going to have more happening, and the step percent. So proportionally, uh, the, the the way that each of these entries is going to be ordered in according to like step percent and uh, milliseconds per frame is going to be the same. I don't think it's all that helpful to look at um, step percentage because it can be a little bit uh, like distracting, uh, for lack of better words. So I'm just going to move that um, move that column off the window, and I'm just going to focus on uh, time in milliseconds over here. So again, this is not a complicated game. There's only a couple of objects in it. Uh, but if if you wanted to, you could you could expand the um, the NPC object, which is responsible for walking around. And you can see that is called uh, three times per frame, once for each of the relevant objects. Uh, you can see that it contains a few functions within, a cosine function, a sine function, and a uh, conversion function for degrees and radians. Uh, let me see if I can actually uh, find that in code. This is what it looks like. So, find a destination to walk to and try to walk there. 
Uh, we also have, for example, the step event of the player. A little bit different. Contains a few keyboard checking functions. Uh, we have the draw event for for the player, the draw GUI event. Uh, draw underscore 64 is the draw GUI event. And you can see uh, individually uh, how many times each of the functions within these events have been called. So three draw sprite calls on the part of the, uh, the NPC object. Uh, you can see how long that takes, which is about a microsecond for three draw sprite calls. And from here, you can start to tease apart uh, if you have any particular object in your game whose draw event or whose step event or something is taking more time than you think it should be. Or maybe if you just have more objects in your game than you thought you did, and while none of them individually are taking too long, they do start to add up and take a lot of time to uh, execute all their respective events. You can also flip this on its head, and you can go to the bottom up view, and this will, instead of showing the, uh, the recursive tree, which is the uh, starting with each game maker object's event and then expanding from there to see the uh, individual function calls within, uh, you can hit the bottom up view, and that is going to show you a list of all the function calls in the game, regardless of where they happen, and it will tally them up. This will show you the amount of time that any individual function will take in your game per step, regardless of where it happens, regardless of which object event it comes from. This isn't something I have to show off in this example here, but let's say you have a bunch of different enemy types in your game, and let's say that they're all doing some MP grid navigation every step, and while any given MP grid navigation might not take too much time, maybe just a few tens of microseconds, if you have a hundred of those doing that every step, then that could add up and become somewhat expensive over the course of an entire frame. And while you might not necessarily be able to detect something like that if you just looked at the top-down view, uh, looking at the bottom-up view for something like that could be rather helpful because it will show all the MP grid navigation function calls altogether. Okay? And honestly, you can get a lot out of using the debugger's profiler, and you can learn a lot about how to use it just by messing around and by looking at each of the timings of each of the function calls and seeing if anything stands out to you. But uh, I do want to, in addition to um, just saying that the debugger is there and you should use it, I do want to uh, show a somewhat more complicated example. So this is a... Oops, that's not the debug mode. Uh, this is Wizard Ducks. This is the, the game that I have been known to work on. And we're going to let that load, and I'm going to, uh, to come out into the game world and walk around a little bit. So, uh, if I were to open up the profiler, and if I were to run the profiler, um, we would see that we have a bit more going on here. Uh, once again, let me move the step percentage out of the way. Let me just focus on um, call count and the, uh, the millisecond timings. Let me sort by uh, milliseconds so that we can see what's the most expensive. So right now we can see that this game is running at about, say, 55 FPS, which is about 17 microseconds per, uh, per step, 17 microseconds per frame, give or take. Uh, we can see a few things looking at the top-down view. Uh, the majority of that, about almost 12 uh, milliseconds, is being taken up by OBJ, OBJ Demo's draw event. That's basically the camera object drawing uh, everything in the game world. Uh, we've also got a fair amount of time being taken up in the uh, step event of that same object. Uh, we've got a fair amount of time being taken up by uh, OBJ underscore renderables step event. And this is, uh, for most objects, this is, this is nothing. But uh, a couple objects are using a step event to, uh, you know, do things that you'd expect objects with a step event to do. Anyway, uh, I think enough of that. Stop profiling. Uh, profiling itself, by the way, does take up a little bit of frame time. You might have noticed that the FPS underscore real jumped up from about 50-something to 70-something when I stopped. Anyway, so an annoying thing the Game Maker does is if you have a, um like a method that belongs to an object or a method that belongs to a struct in instance somewhere, and you try to look at it in the debugger, it's going to have a name that looks a lot like this, right? Anon, anon, big hex identifier, gml, global script, group particles, 8571. Um, that unfortunately doesn't make tracking down uh, a lot of the things in, um, in the debugger's profile are very easy. I do wish Game Maker would find a way to give some of these, uh, like, to make them more identifiable in the debugger. In the meantime, you, uh, you have to do a bit of detective work, unfortunately, to try to narrow down uh, where these anonymous functions are coming from. 
So in my case, there's some uh, there's some method in the uh, shader lights script, which is being called. Uh, there is some method in the, the uh, OBJ demo create event, which is being called. And uh, lastly, up here, this big chunk of nine and a half milliseconds per frame, uh, which just says event perform. Uh, this is happening because I am uh, indirectly calling every object's uh, draw event and drawing everything in the game through a uh, basically central game controller rather than just letting them be visible. In my case, there are almost 2,300 draw calls being done on different uh, visible objects in the game. Uh, it's not hard to imagine how, uh, how that adds up with all these flowers and trees and stuff after a while. And a, a big chunk of that Almost 1,700 of those are being occupied by the uh, OBJ grass draw event, and uh, that encompasses grass and also the flowers. All these flowers that you see here, right? While each individual uh, grass object may be uh, pretty quick to execute its draw event, there are 1,700 of them, and 1,700 of these collectively take about 7 milliseconds to, uh, to draw all of them. And we can break that down further. Uh, we've got 1,300 uh, draw sprite generals, uh, 1,300 uh, struct get from hash, 1,300 clamps, GPU set depth, seal, floor. So this is going to be a little bit of a silly example, but let's say that we decide that maybe 1,700 uh, grass objects uh, being drawn and uh, having their step events processed per frame is a little bit much, maybe a little bit more than we intended to. So you could, um, let's say, either delete some from your game, uh, if you have them all in like a giant game maker room or something like that, or uh, in my case, if I just go into the uh, settings and reduce the flower density a little bit. Um, if I were to reduce the flower density to say, oh, I don't know, 100%, we'll get there. All right, there we go. And if I were to start profiling again, you would see that the, uh, the average frame rate has gone quite a bit up. The amount of time that it takes OBJ Demo's draw event to execute per frame has gone uh, down by quite a lot. Uh, the number of times that the, uh, the step event is being called, even when it's not doing anything, has gone down by quite a lot. And the frame rate that we're looking at has about doubled, which is pretty nice. We can, uh, we can take a look again at the very same OBJ Demo draw event. Uh, only 850 objects performing a draw event this time including 550 things of grass, excuse me, uh, 240 things of grass, and so on down the line. Again, bit of a silly example, but as you can see here, you can use the profiler to figure out um, which, uh, which part of your game's step event is the most expensive, and while it won't automatically tell you how to fix it, uh, it should help point you in the right direction, uh, showing you which lines of code are uh, taking up the most time giving you a hint to say, hey, maybe you shouldn't be drawing 1,700 flowers per frame, much to my disappointment. That's pretty much it for the debugger's profiler. So I did say that whenever your game is experiencing performance issues, the first thing that you should always do is look at the profiler. Uh, but I also said that it will not always point you in the right direction, and the, uh, the one situation in which the uh, debugger's profiler won't really help you is if there's something outside of this which is contributing to the game's slowdown. So, uh, that could, that usually takes the form of, uh, really two things. One is going to be the, um, if you have a lot of structs in your game, or a lot of structs and arrays in your game, and the garbage collector is going a little haywire, uh, that's not something that'll necessarily show up in your, uh, your game's code in the profiler. I believe that will be, uh, show up under, no, doesn't show up under handle step. That might actually be included under finish frame, um, but anyway. It is rarely actually going to be the case in which the garbage collector is responsible for a lot of lag in your game, but um, if that is, the garbage collector may have a bit of a hard time tracking that down, although, uh, as it happens, oh, it's not open here, the, uh, the regular debug overlay, um, like show debug overlay, uh, does have a category for showing uh, garbage collector time. And the other occasion in which the debugger won't really be of much help is... If the bottleneck is on the GPU, so if you have either a really complicated slash inefficient shader running, or if you're doing something in 3D and you're trying to push just far too many vertices per frame, then the, uh, the debugger won't necessarily be of much help to you, because none of the, uh, none of the listings in the profiler over here are, are actually going to tell you what is happening on the GPU. And to be fair, a lot of the times you can make an educated guess 
Like, if you're trying to draw a vertex buffer that has, like, 50 million triangles in it, there's a pretty good chance that that is going to be responsible for a uh, majority of the processing time per frame. But the, uh, the debugger, unfortunately, won't really do much to help you out there. Hey! I do have an entire series of videos on optimizing 3D in Game Maker, which, if you're experiencing issues like that, may be of some help. Also, because I haven't looked at this in a while, I am just curious if I were to look at the, uh, my code from bottom up. Um... Not gonna do anything about it right now, but apparently I'm calling GPU set text filter extended 1400 times. Interesting. That feels like an an issue I should deal with because I don't can't think of any reason why I would be doing that. Yeah. Okay. Most of this is pretty like to be expected. All right, enough of that. So. I do want to make videos on the other things that you can do with the debugger at some point. The debugger is a pretty powerful tool when it comes to figuring out what's going wrong with your game. And there's a lot of ways that you can utilize it to deal with issues that might come up. That's a story for another day. Today I just wanted to talk about the profiler. I am about to make a video on optimizing a 3D collision system in Game Maker, And I am going to be leaning on the debugger's profiler quite a lot for that. And I figured that while that's on my mind, I might as well make a video on it. So I think that's it for me. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. I like to focus on the weird, complicated things you can do in Game Maker. So if anything like the aforementioned 3D collision system or 3D optimization videos is something that's of interest to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all find this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Syndra Larson, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Army Armbuster for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.